Good evening everyone and welcome to tonight's class. Uh, this is a, an extended version or an, an, an additional class in the Coach's Toolkit series. Now for those of you who've been with us for a while, you'll be, re you'll be familiar with the Coach's Toolkit. These are, um, I guess, the, the tools that we believe you need to really be successful in your coaching sessions and we believe that these are the indispensable parts of coaching that you really have to integrate into your coaching style. And um, one that I've had a few requests about recently is future pacing. So we thought we would add this to the coach's toolkit because um, we really believe that future pacing is a very important part of your coaching and we always want to give you what you're looking for. So welcome to a future pacing class, part of the coach's toolkit series. <clears throat> oh, so that's just a little <laughs> photo of me and there we go. So the Coach's Toolkit series, they're indispensable, simple and effective tools to help you instantly become an even better coach and we believe that they're the essentials of coaching. So they're sort of the components, the building blocks of um, what we consider to be essential coaching and they must be built into your overall coaching style. So even if you're experienced, we encourage you to review these ones. Um, because it's going to refresh your memory, refocus you and serve your clients even more. And what I always find when I'm writing these classes and, and when I'm continuing my own coaching revision and studies um, is that the part that I'm choosing to review or write about that week invariably ends up being very helpful in a coaching session that week. So um, it's, it's a really funny thing that, you know, what you focus on is what you get and we know that to be true as coaches. And what I would love for you to um, see is that any part of coaching that you're focusing on and, and really devoting your attentions to is always going to be useful for you and then it's up to you how you choose to use it. So I know you're going to love future pacing because it's just a very important part of coaching. My challenge to you is focus on the linguistic tool that's provided in each of these sessions and incorporate them into your daily conversations and into coaching and of course notice the difference that it makes. Um, and that's something that, you know, if you're making it a very, very disciplined practice of your coaching then really um, incorporating a different coaching tool and a different style and a different modality every time that you learn it is a great way to integrate everything together and for you to get a really um, beautiful rounded coaching style where you've got all kinds of tools available to you and you can just pull any one of them out whenever you need it. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so. Future pacing, what is future pacing? All right, now I've already had someone ask this, so I want to share with you what it's all about. Future pacing is performed at the end of a coaching session generally, although as we're going to see, it can be used at any time. And a perfect time to use future pacing, especially for beginner coaches, is just at the end of the session. But for anyone who's using the more advanced NLP techniques, um, it, it's an absolutely essential part of your technique that you finish it off with a future pace so that the client can really integrate the changes that have happened for them. Um, it's, a, it's essential for cementing what has already been discussed and the goal that has already been set. And it's a very specific skill, but it makes a huge difference. So I would encourage you, I really can't imagine any coaching session where you wouldn't be using a future pace of some description. And certainly for anyone who's just getting started or who's still refining their coaching practice, I just used to make it a, a, an absolute must that there was a five or six sentences I always said at the start, then I would use a good chunky coaching model and then I would finish up with some acknowledgement, a future pace, etc. So there was a real formula to it for me for quite a while and I think the future pacing is uh, a, a very, very integral part of your overall coaching. So um, it really can make all the difference to the, the transformation that a client experiences. Even in those last five, six, seven minutes of your coaching session, a great future pace can actually help shift a client where there has been not as much of a shift during the session. So it's sort of even your, your, sort of your last bus stop on the journey. <clears throat> Please excuse me, I've just got a bit of a froggy throat tonight. Okay. 
Now future pacing basically, um, the easy way to explain it is it's when you take a client out to a time in the future where they have achieved their goal or made the change or taken the action that they're wanting to take. Basically it's using their imagination to tap into what it would be like to achieve this goal. And you can use it in any kind of session, but here I just want to give you an example of where you would use it in a good old GROW session because GROW, um, certainly the GROW model as, as, a, as a model for coaching, there's two applications and stay with me here. The first one is when you've, when you've just started coaching and you've got your hand out of all the different questions you ask in a coaching session, which is wonderful, and you use the GROW questions, so you pick a few, a few from the goals part and a few from the reality part, a few from options and a few from the way forward and you just run the session like that. But in the broader context, GROW is actually the framework upon which all good coaching sessions are um, hung because really if you think about it in terms of, um, in training we call it gap identification, you have to talk about what your current reality is, you have to talk about what you want and you have to brainstorm some options and then figure out what your action plan is. So they're the steps of the GROW model anyway and really if you think about it, identifying a performance gap or, or something that you're not happy with and, and where you want it to go, it's kind of logical that there's steps to go through. So future pacing specifically is the part of a session where the client is imagining how it could be. When they're getting a clearer picture of what the future might look like and you're really starting to fire up some new thoughts and new feelings and new neurology around that. And of course naturally that tends to fall into the options and the way forward part and especially the way forward part of your um, session. However, sometimes you'll start a session and the client will, will say, um, yeah, you know, actually I'm really fired up about this new sales thing that we've been talking about and, um, you know, from last week's session I was thinking that maybe I should do this, this and this and I'm really wanting to get a, a clearer picture around that. So you're right at the beginning of the session, you're in the goals part, even there you could, you could take a moment or two to do a short future pace with the client and have them describe for you exactly what it is they're envisioning for their future and, and exactly what outcomes it is that they want to get to. So even that is um, in, in a way a small future pace. It's using their imagination to describe something that is not real yet but giving them a picture of, of where they want to go. Can I check in with you guys, is this all making sense for you so far? Great, thank you. I'm getting some people saying, awesome, it sounds fantastic, cool, great, thank you, awesome. All right. <clears throat> now ultimately, what future pacing is all about is giving the client a very rich and beautiful picture of where they want to go. And I want to talk to you about this extensively. First of all, think about the power of focus. If a client is stuck in a problem, then they have a lot of neurology or neural networks or uh, connections in their brain about that problem. So say for example you have a client who is unhappy in their relationship. They've got a lot of detail in their brain about what they don't like in their relationship and they've got a lot of connections in their brains about this. So they have the emotional feeling of say unhappiness and this is connected in their brain through neural networks, forgive me, just some technical issues for one moment. Here we go. Great. So they have they have some uh, very strong connections in their brains uh, in their neural network. Um, between unhappiness and perhaps maybe the sight of their partner, the sound of their partner's voice, a list of things that they don't like about their partner, things that they do that annoy them or times in their future with, that they're going to have to spend with their partner and they're already um, 
future pacing themselves to, to not enjoy that time in the future, past memories they don't like and so on. And all of those little pieces of information in their brain are connected through neural networks. And if a scientist took a scan of their brain while they were thinking about that stuff and mapped and measured where uh, unhappiness and visual stimuli and auditory stimuli for, of those particular types are located in the brain of that person, what you would see is that all of those would be in a network. They'd be all clumped together or they would be connected by electronic impulses when that emotion is firing up. As you know, that's how the brain works in a very, very simple way. So they spend a lot of time with that neurology fired up and active and pulsing with those electrical impulses. And the more unhappy they are, the more detail they'll have and the stronger those connections will be in their brain. And so when a client has something that they're working towards, say sticking with this example, a goal maybe of improving the quality of their relationship, what we see as coaches is that they actually have very little or even no neural network around this, around the positive emotions and around what it might take to have a really great relationship. What they do, what little they do have about what it takes to make a great relationship will most likely be very, very much disconnected from their partner in their mind or their relationship. Maybe they've not seen or experienced a healthy, loving and happy relationship anywhere else in their life. So they literally might not have anything in their brain that tells them what that looks like. They may ha have no idea at all. And even if they have seen it, maybe it was, say, for example, their grandparents, something that's so far removed from them and their relationship with their current partner that the neurology just simply doesn't fire up at the same time. The two are not connected at all. And this is where future pacing comes in, and this is where it's so valuable. Okay. Yeah, Adrian's making a fantastic point here. Adrian, I was doing some reading about that today. He's saying, yes, maybe it is real, not just in their vision yet. As quantum might say, it's already real. You're right, because quantum mechanics and quantum physics tells us that all realities exist at all times and all possibilities um, are available to us at any one moment. And so you're right, Adrian, those possibilities are available to them. They just haven't connected it up yet in their brain. Isn't that interesting? I um, was doing some fascinating research about this today, actually, in preparing this class. <clears throat> so as you know, what we're doing as coaches is allowing the clients to see a different reality than the one that they're currently experiencing. You know that. What we're doing is pushing um, our clients outside of their comfort zone, helping them expand, expand their comfort zone, pushing them past boundary conditions. And so... It's allowing them to see a new reality, a, literally a different reality opens up to them. It's opening up their horizons and broadening their possibilities. And so what this means is we're helping them make new neural connections, new pathways in their minds. Excuse me for just a moment. Sorry guys, just a bit of a cough there. Um, and so a future pace is very important because what it does is allows them to create new neural pathways of how they would like it to be. We're actually physically assisting them in creating new physical connections in their brains when we're asking them to imagine a different future. As we know, the things that we have more neural network around are the things that our unconscious and conscious minds are likely to move towards. So we're helping our client build up a picture of something to move towards. We're helping them build up visual, imagine visual stimuli, um, auditory stimuli and attaching it to certain emotions and positive emotions. Now this is very important and it meshes with another coaching concept, of course, which is the pain and pleasure model. People will spend far less effort moving away, sorry, more moving towards what they love than they will moving away from what hurts them. So most people are very, very motivated to move away from what hurts them and not particularly motivated to move towards what is going to be good for them. 
And the issue with this, of course, in terms of making positive changes in their lives is that it takes a massive amount of pain to really change anything. And then even then, most people won't move towards something happy, but they'll just move away from something that's causing them discomfort. Does this make sense? If you ask most people what they really truly want and and what they are looking forward to, they actually don't even know. What they do know is what they don't want. So if you ask most people, and you would have noticed this with your clients, what they want in their life and what their plan is and what's their goal, they'll be able to tell you in great detail what they don't want, but they'll find it very challenging to tell you what they do want. And remember, what you focus on is what you get. So if we're focusing on what we don't want, then what we'll get is more of the same. So this, again, is where future pacing is so powerful. For a person who wants to change their relationship, for example, you'll be spending some time in your coaching um, conversation. You'll be sort of chunking around, chunking up, chunking down, questioning having fun playing with how they do want their relationship to be. So you will have already started the groundwork of building a new neural network work for them about positive emotions, what a positive relationship is made up, up of, what are the different components, what will they see, what will they hear, what will they feel, etc. And you'll also, I'm sure, have done some specific strategy building around that and some action plans and, and come up with a bunch of options about how they could have a more positive relationship. And so you've started to create the new neural networks. And then what the future pace will do at the end of the session is bring in all of their senses, make it a much more beautiful, complete, detailed, whole picture, like a movie playing in their head. And what happens is it starts their unconscious mind on the quest for ways to go about making that happen. So when we future pace in detail and in a positive framework, and I'll show you how to do that, we help clients get more of a neural network about what the future can look like and we set them on the path towards it. It's a beautiful gift that you must give to your clients once they have got that dream of what they want, helping them get a really detailed picture of what, they will, what that will look like and who they have to be and what they have to do to have that, very important. And the final gift, I love it, is that future pace where you just really give them that experience through the words you'll use and through the um, techniques that you'll use in the future pace, you're actually going to give them an emotional experience of what that is going to be like, that outcome. And that then becomes a memory for them and it's something that they will be driven towards because they've already experienced it once. We build new neural connections, strengthen their positive mindset around the new future, and then we help them imagine new ways into being. It really is the pinnacle of any great coaching session. Okay, just want to check in any questions or comments or anything so far. You're very quiet tonight, guys. I'm usually getting lots of comments by this point. Are we a bit overloaded? Okay, great. Couple of couple of questions. Okay, so Yasmin is saying, how often do we future pace a particular goal with a client? Great question, Yasmin. And the answer is three. And I was going to tell you that in a moment anyway. Um, and um, one of the one of the really um, key things is that you can either use three identical future paces, or you can use three different styles of future pace. And I'll show you each of them this evening. But yeah, always do a three. Yasmin, the unconscious mind loves threes. It holds on to threes for whatever reason. So um, yeah, absolutely three times. Tamara is saying this would have helped me today with a potential client who's a bit confused. Yeah, Tamara, and this is also a wonderful technique for using with sales as well. And certainly, um, guys, I'm teaching you this as a coaching technique, but think about it. If you want anyone to make a commitment to their future and perhaps towards a coaching relationship, then giving them an experience of what that's going to be like when they've made the changes they want to make surely is going to help them make a decision. Okay, Bob is typing the lecture. Wow, Bob, relax. <laughs> um, Bob, 
there are slides and stuff available for you. Everything's recorded, but I guess if that works for you, I just want you to be really present with us tonight as well and, and make sure that you're getting everything you can out of the out of our time together. Um, but hey, if that's what's working for you, that's cool. <laughs> Kirsty's saying it's making loads of sense. The penny is dropping. Yeah. Um, Kirsty, I agree. When I learnt future pacing, it was like this huge thing that I felt had been missing and it just is this magical wrap up in the session that just cements everything and it's so beautiful. It's so lovely to see. I want to talk to you about that in a moment. Purdy is saying she worked on this very thing with her client last night all about her all her comments were about, I don't want to fail my study, I'm no good at chemistry, and we got some new language going around it. Beautiful. That's exactly it. Yep. She hadn't even realized what she was saying. It's so common, Purdy. It's a really unconscious thing, that negative language. You're right. And just even having consciousness about it will already shift something. Even if the person's still saying it, a little part of their brain is going, oop, hang on, wait, that's not really serving me anymore. Yeah, Kirsty's going, when she gets coached, she loves a good future pace. <laughs> Excellent. So how do you do it then? I better, I better make sure I answer your, all your questions about how to do it. Okay. So a great future pace. So here are just a few tips, a few general tips from me before we go into some specifics. Um, a great future pace takes time, guys. This is one part of your coaching session where using quick command language and, and short clipped sentences is usually not going to be beneficial. Um, now you've got a couple of choices when you future pace. You can, you've got a couple of stylistic differences that you can use. Both of them will work just in different coaching styles. Now the, the style that I'm going to use with you this evening is going to be my comfortable place and my place where I know a lot of you guys are comfortable as well because I always get great comments after we do a bit of this. So my, my style for future pacing is usually a long slow future pace and it's delivered in a um, trance language called Milton which is something that you learn when you do NLP studies and if you just listen to what I do tonight and get into it you'll be able to imitate parts of it anyway. The, the the benefit for me of doing it that way is that you're really tapping into the client's unconscious. I usually get them to close their eyes while they're doing the future pace just to make it a very rich visual experience. Um, and, and I find that that is a beautiful time also to really just reinstall some great stuff for them so that at the end of the session they definitely walk away feeling a more positive feeling with a clear view of what it is they're going to achieve out of our time together. In terms of delivering a great quality coaching session, you can understand that delivering that outcome that they've been looking for, for them at the end of the session, very, very important in terms of them being satisfied with the service that you're giving. The other opportunity you have is a more command style future pace and this is what you would use with a client who um, has asked you to be a more command style coach who you have a much, um, I don't want to say bossier but, but you have far more of a, um, I guess a command type coaching relationship with them. So this is where you're action coaching them. You're telling them what needs to happen. You're giving them time frames and you're making sure that they understand exactly what needs to happen. And so what happens with your language there is it becomes a bit more clipped. It becomes definitely the, the tonality changes and we start going down at the end of sentences instead of that sort of more calm, peaceful, monotonous Milton style language, which I prefer. Um, and this is particularly useful if you've got a client who's all about taking action and who really that's their preferred modality. So you've got a couple of different choices of the styles of language that you use, but the components of a great future pace will be the same. So how long do you leave for your future pace? Well, look, it's different every time, but I've, I've got sort of a... Um, I guess I've, I've got one that nearly really becomes the same future pace every time and it takes about five to seven minutes to deliver. So it's a very rich one, it's long and it really allows the client some beautiful space at the end. I usually wait about 30 seconds after future pacing so that they can then take it even further themselves. And then when they come back to me, I say to them, hey, where did you go? What happened? Tell me about it. I'm curious. So they get to then externalize and tell me what they've gone through as a result of their future pace 
what they've imagined, even beyond what we were talking about. And it's a lovely way for them to then own and walk away owning what they've just imagined. Now importantly, um, I'll give you some distinctions around the three different types of future pace in a moment, but in general what you want to do is, and this is something you want to do with all your coaching, all of your coaching language, but particularly in the future pace, you want to include keywords from the session which speak to the client's deepest wishes and desires. So if the client is saying, I want to have a really loving, passionate, intimate relationship with my partner, then those are the key words that you're going to use for them in the future pace. So you never refer back to problem language, you never say something like, um, oh, and you'll notice um, in the future pace, you never say something like, and you'll notice that those old problems of fighting and, and throwing dishes at each other, they don't happen anymore because what you're doing is directing the client's um, visual memory to go back to times when that has happened and your breaking state of the, of the future pace being a positive thing. So once a client has named for you what their problem or challenge is, then be careful never to refer to it again in the exact same language and you're starting to break the neural pathways. I usually call it that old thing. Oh, you know that old thing we were talking about that, you know, before, are you choosing to feel that anymore? So never say, you know, that, that fear or that whatever it is the client is trying to get rid of. As often as possible, you don't use that language again. Once, you, once you've named it and they've owned that that's what they're feeling, then then you really must make an attempt not to use that language again and instead focus on the client's keywords of what they've given you about how it should be, what the future should look like and what they really want it to be. So speaking to their deepest wishes and desires. So I very rarely say to you that you should write notes in a session. Uh, I think I've described to you before that I just use a little handheld notepad, like just a, not a big A4 notepad, just a tiny little notebook and I just have it there and usually I just do a little word cloud. Um, I certainly don't write big reams of notes like I used to when I started coaching. Um, but what I do always make sure I do and I have a bit of a map that I draw for myself and for me, for whatever reason, it's in the bottom right hand corner of the page. I usually make sure I've got at least three uh, positive words, three moving moving towards words that the client is wishing to happen or wanting to happen and I make sure that those are the resources that I mention in the future pace. So the client might be wanting to have, as I said before, a more intimate, passionate, loving relationship with their partner, then those are the three words that I've written down. Is that making sense? Can I check in with you guys please? Great. Okay, yes, good, got, got some yeses, wonderful. If not, please just give me a question, guys. I'm absolutely happy to answer questions. All right, a great future pace is also always positively framed. So as I said before, what we need to do is remove any negative language, even if you're saying it in a positive way. So saying things like, you know, that old thing of not feeling connected to your partner, well, you don't have that anymore. So, so you're trying to use it in a, you're attempting to use it in a positive way, but you're actually, that's a negative frame. So I want you to remember in the future pace especially, but throughout your coaching session, positively framed language. And what that means is occasionally you'll have a, a you know, a mini break while you think, hang on, I would have said it that way, now I'm going to say it this way. That's cool. Coaching is a conversation like no other and your clients very quickly will get used to you having little, you know, half second pauses where maybe you wouldn't have or maybe using more silence than in a regular conversation because that's some of the beauty of coaching is it's a different dance that we do when we're having a coaching conversation. Now what you must do in your future pace is appeal to the client's preferred modality and then expand it into all the others. So for example, what do I mean by modality? I mean are they visual, are they auditory, are they kinesthetic, are they auditory digital? They could also be olfactory and gustatory and this is where you really want to bring every single modality into it. So say I've got a client who is very, very visual, I've established that, I know that that's how they think, speak, learn and I'm quite comfortable using that language with them, talking about how to see things and clarifying and making it clear and in 
the future pace, what you want to do is gently roll them into now. What I want you to do is see a complete picture and I want you to notice all of the details and really get a sense of what's happening all around and get that 3D picture very clear in your mind. So what I'm doing here is using quite a lot of visual language at first and then you will move into incorporating other modalities as well so that the client is building up a real 3D picture perhaps that is even richer for them than their normal internal representations of reality because it's including their non-habitual modalities as well. And if you're doing a great future pace, then coaches, you're basically going to go there with the client. So you're going to get your own mental picture of what's going on and you're going to um, really use very rich language to make sure that they're having an experience of this. So honestly, what I usually do, and this is what works for me, other people might do it differently, but I usually imagine myself um, doing exactly whatever it is that the client said that they want to do. So, um, you know, building a great business, say, for example, then I imagine myself, ah, and one is springing to mind now, it's one that I did a little while ago, but it was a very powerful one with a client who um, decided she wanted to start her own training company and she had a very, very clear picture of how she wanted the training business to look, feel, sound, smell and I found myself picturing it with her very in, in a lot of detail. We spent a long time on this future pace because she didn't have a clear picture initially and I really wanted to give that to her. So I still now, even now I'm remembering exactly the building, the students, the whole thing, I'm remembering exactly what it looks like because I went there too with the client. And that's a, that's a very insightful comment, Etienne's saying that he finds that that is his best tool to know if it's a good future pace, whether he can feel like he's going there with the client as well. Awesome, thank you, that's a great insight. I hadn't realised I was doing that. Okay, so a great future pace is also rich, detailed and beautiful and this is where um, I challenge you to really get some, get some comfort in your language around describing beautiful things in lush, delicious language that's really going to just be so appealing to the client. Um, especially as Aussies, we spend so much time in our language minimizing everything and saying, oh yeah, it was all right. What I want you to do in these coaching sessions is provide them with the, exactly the opposite experience. So being very, very positive, very rich, detailed, beautiful language and really just imagining the best way it could possibly be. Now you deliver it in powerful command language, either using that Milton type tonality, which I'm going to share with you tonight, or using that more clipped sort of command style. Positive tonality and you give it depth and meaning through the modulation of your voice, through the light and dark, the pauses, all of those things that you're learning as coaches how to do when you're playing with language. As I've already said, for me I usually deliver them in Milton, um, that's just my comfortable zone. What you do want to do is make sure that regardless of the style you use, that it is different from the rest of your coaching session, that it really feels like it's a crescendo that you've been building towards for the whole session. I love to give um, time and space to the client afterwards, as I said about 30 seconds afterwards or when they open their eyes, whichever comes first, but quite often they'll sit there even longer. And do you know what guys, if you're noticing in your client that they've got their eyes closed, not only have they got their eyes closed, but they're doing those little eyelid flickers as well, then you've actually got them in some kind of a trance and they're doing a beautiful unconscious thing where they're really accessing the deepest parts of their psyche and that's a fabulous place for them to be. And it's repeated three times with variety. So you don't do the same future pace three times in a row, uh, but what you can do is either use the same style three times, but building different words and different vocabulary into it, or you can use each of the three styles one time each. And so I'll share those with you in just a moment. And so what are you noticing about the client when you're future pacing? Look, the same as any other time in your coaching session, you're using all of your sensory acuity to notice what's happening for the client. Now, they're in a space now where stress really 
if you've if you've had a great coaching session and you're at the future pace, stress should be gone. There should be very little um, tension in their body. There should be very little indications of any discomfort. What what I love to look for is all those beautiful little signs in the client that they're enjoying themselves. So a little smile, maybe they're nodding, maybe um, you've noticed in your client that they've got an unconscious habit that they do when they're happy. Maybe it's a, a rubbing their fingers together or stroking a thumb or whatever it is that they do. You're looking for those little details that they're enjoying it, that they're really going there and that it's a beautiful, rich experience for them. You might notice uh, a flush on their cheeks or on their neck. Uh, you may be noticing, again, the nodding is a big indicator, maybe raised eyebrows. All of these are signs that your client has really gone to that beautiful place and they're just enjoying it and imagining it. Their breathing's probably going to calm and become deeper and their body may relax even further. And these are all signs that um, you're tapping into the right part that, that makes it a pleasurable experience for them. And that's exactly where you want to be. If you're noticing, conversely, that your client still seems pretty stressed, um, kind of eyes darting around, maybe they've got a nervous tick or they're jiggling their leg, then you need to look at changing the language in your future pace and stretching it out so that they do get there in the end. Okay, and I've got a question here. Do you mean three different places on the timeline? No, it sounds, stay with me. I'm going to answer that question for you right now. Oh, in just a moment. Okay, I will answer that question for you. However, I need to give you tonight's code for this session. Okay, so guys, the codes you need because we're starting to use these for your assessments and specifically for your ICF assessments um, to prove the different classes that you've come along to. So you do need to make a note of these. Just store them up and they'll become part of your assessments very shortly. And what we're doing is you'll see the assessment codes coming in at different parts of the session um, purely for administrative purposes. So tonight's is bang in the middle of the session. It's CTK713. So just write that down on your notes or pop it in your diary, whatever system it is that you're using to record your classes. CTK713. Okay. All right. So before we move into some practice, I want to share with you the three different styles of future pace. So there are three different types. The first is a no resources installed future pace. A no resources installed future pace. And this is very, very simple future pace where you um, have the client picture whatever it is that they want to picture and you don't give them any specifics around that. So you just let their imagination run wild and this could be, um, this can be useful in a session where the client has maybe not given you a lot of detail, maybe there's been a painful memory they've associated into or there's been some stuff going on where you haven't got a lot of language from them and what you need to do then is just describe a beautiful positive experience where all of those things that you want are coming to you in the future. And it's a time in the future that you can clearly see and the benefits are flowing from all of those changes that you've wanted to make. All of the things that you've learned, all the beautiful resources that you've uncovered are coming to you right now. Do you see what I did? I didn't actually say confidence, positivity, action, anything. I didn't name any of the resources. I just said some general sentences about good stuff. And that's a no resources installed future pace where you are not giving, serving up on a plate anything for the client. You're just purely letting them choose from whatever they want in their mind as the thing that they're going to need in that time. Is this making sense? No resources installed. You're not naming any of the resources. You're allowing the client to silently choose the resources that they're imagining. And you're just using words like positive, resources, um, achievement, all of those things without actually naming the resources. That's the first type. No questions there, so I think I will move on. The second type is the one that you'll probably be more familiar with because it's my favourite style and I'm sure I use it a lot in class, and that is the resources installed 
future pace where you actually as I've said to you before you actually use some of that language and install some of that language into the vision for them so you know I said I write notes and I put down the bottom right hand corner I, I make sure I write down three positive resources that they've named during the session then I make sure that I name each of those resources in the visualization that I'm giving them and I might even put another couple of related ones in there as well. So this is where you say something to the client like, I want you to go out to a time in the future and I want you to imagine. Imagine a time when all of that courage and all of that creativity that you have, have been waiting to uncover is just flowing through you. So I've used the words courage and creativity because they were two resources that the client said they wanted. I'm just installing those resources into the future pace. So I'm using that language specifically in the future pace. That's the second type. It's called a resources installed future pace. Everyone cool? So the difference is that the first one is, is kind of a very generic positive experience and the client imagines it themselves. The second one is a more specific, more tailored, more targeted one. And you're using, you're reflecting back at the client some of the resources that they've said they want. And the third type of future pace is called a backsliding future pace. And the backsliding future pace is uh, the one that you use when um, you have the client imagine that they've gotten to this great state and then something happens that may have caused them to trip up in the past or have a surprising experience. And what you notice is that even despite that, that the courage and the creativity shows up even more, that in that moment, in that moment of surprise or disappointment, that even more creativity or um, courage or whatever the resources are that they want shows up even more and you bust through it and keep achieving blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you actually imagine that you actually have them imagine a time where things have gone really, really well, and then oops, something has come along and tripped them up, and nope, they're overcoming it and they're keeping going anyway. So that's three different types of future pace. Now, what you have an opportunity to do is use each one of those three times in a session if you've noticed that there's one particular style that your client is comfortable with, or you can use each one once so that you have three future paces in total. Etienne, does that answer your question? And yes, they are three different times on the timeline. So the first one is about a month out, the second one is three months, six months, whatever, and then the last one is even further into the future. So it depends, of course, on the goal. It depends on the goal, it depends on the action list that they've got, but I usually tend to do uh, a couple of weeks into the future, a couple of months into the future, and then either six months or 12 months into the future. And in each one, they're just building upon their positive um, neural network that they're building. Can I have some yeses, guys, that you are with me? Three future paces throughout the session, you're right, Etienne, but you do them all together. So I do them all at the end, typically, or you do you stack three um, after doing a great NLP technique or something like that. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. We're going to have a practice of it right now. Now, I've got a question here. Adrian's saying... Is there an opportunity with the future in sales or meetings to help people become closer to on board? Adrian, sorry, I don't understand that question. Can you retype that for me? Sorry, I'm um, just not quite getting that. Can you reframe that for me, please? With future in sales, closer. I'm sorry, not getting that. So just retype that for me and I'll make sure I answer it for you at the end. But right now, I'm going to give you guys the gift of a beautiful future pace. So I want to practice. And Bob, this is the moment where you stop typing, my friend, <laughs> and you just come and be part of the class, okay? So here's what I want you to do, guys. I want you to pick a goal that you have to do with your coaching business right now. Any goal, I don't mind what it is. For example, a goal for me right now would be to get my AdWords campaign working more effectively. 
you might have a goal of getting your first paying client, you may have a goal of increasing your, your coaching rate, you may have a goal of um, quitting your full-time job, whatever your goal is. But make it real, make it specific and make it current. And I want you to rate yourself right now on a scale of 1 to 10 how motivated you currently feel to taking action towards this goal. And I want you to put that into the question box for me. So give me the goal in one sentence and how motivated are you to achieve it? Okay, Bob. Bob, I'm going to share your comment with everyone. I'm just going to get you to reframe it positively for me. So you have said to avoid a failure in your business with your business clients. Bob, I'm just going to ask you to reframe that so that it's a moving towards goal. So instead of avoiding a failure, maybe you're wanting to achieve success. In your own words, Bob, can you just reframe that for me, please? And yes, I'm coaching just a little bit now. Yasmin's goal is to get her first paying client. She's a seven. Tony, what is your goal? You've said it, you're a four. What is your goal? Raywin is saying to build my website. What's your score? What, how, how motivated are you currently, Raywin? Purdy's saying successfully finishing coaching training. Oh, she's only a six. Look out. <laughs> Fiona's saying write outline programs that I will offer. She's a 10 out of 10. Oh, wow, they're coming in fast now. I can't keep up. Sonia's saying having 15 paying clients by the 5th of August 2013. The score is 10. Kirsty's saying I'm passionate about acquiring paying clients today at 10. Enrico's saying start coaching full-time to leave my job and live with my new career. Uh, Enrico, what's your score right now? How motivated are you? Do I need to ask? <laughs> James is saying, become a full-time coach by September, resign from my other job. You're a 10. Raywin's saying, 8. John's saying, get a niche finalized and web content completed. He's a 6. Um, who else am I seeing here? Charmaine's saying, to get a first, first pro rider client, it's, it's 6 out of 10. Vicky's saying, first group coaching workshop, 7. Beata's saying, a second stream of income coming from coaching is a 5. Tony's, ah, great, Tony. Thank you for sharing. Paid clients at $150 per hour. Awesome. Adrian, to use future pacing more often. <laughs> He's a 10. Etienne's saying, 10, record and post my first training audio for my website. Go for it. He's a 10. Enrico's saying, yep, 10. <laughs> I thought so. Bobby's saying, um, turning a potential prospect situation into a victory. Much better, Bob. I'm going to keep working on that language with you, my friend. Sarkas is saying, become a, become a full-time trainer and coach by August the 16th. 10 out of 10 is your motivation level. Sarkis, can you please make that an 11? And the extra point is because August the 16th is my birthday. <laughs> and I'll celebrate with you. Pam is saying, increase the hours I coach each week. Five. Tamara is saying, getting first paying client and get up to date with the course. Getting lots of paid clients to support myself at eight. And Layla is saying, to start coaching and get paid at eight. Wow, I have some very motivated people on the class tonight. And what I want to do is for you to give yourselves the gift to just now take a moment or two to imagine that future into being. So right now, put away your pens, forget about typing anything, and just take a moment to give yourself this gift right now, guys. So I want you to go out right now into the future, into a time that hasn't happened yet. Let's go one month from today, one month from right now. And I want you to notice for a moment all of the resources that you're tapping into. Resources, perhaps, that you hadn't realized were available to you and that you hadn't even been aware of. And just notice how good it feels, that new reality with those new resources. Notice all the things that are going on in that time. What are the things around you? What are you seeing right now? That's right. Very good. What are you feeling about those wonderful changes that you're making? What are you noticing and telling yourself as a result? Just notice that right now. Notice the sounds, the smells of success. And notice any taste that this has as well. That's right. 
Notice all the resources that you've uncovered within yourself, all the different levels you're, not, you're now playing at and all the ways that that is showing up in your world. Very good. And I want you to see how that's playing out for others as well. The ripple effect of all the resources that you've taken to a new level and the ways in which it's positively affecting everything in your business and your life. That's right. Very good. And now I want you to go out to a time, a time even further in the future, a time that hasn't happened yet, in three months. And you're going to see that you've uncovered even more resources within yourself and you've taken things to a whole new level. And I want you to notice the signs of your success. And as you do, you notice a new sense of confidence and certainty. Listen, can you hear it? A sense of confidence and certainty in yourself and your path that you'd never noticed until right now. I want you to notice your ability to build and create and become whatever you need to do because of the deep confidence that is now within you. Feel it. Notice how great it feels. Notice how others are communicating with you differently, how you're communicating with yourself differently as well, with more certainty, more confidence and the ability to take action. And now I want you to go out to a time, a whole 12 months from now, and you're painting yourself an even bigger and brighter picture. Turn it up, turn it up, the brightness, the colour, the sounds. Turn them up. You're noticing the last 12 months ago was just the beginning as you stand at the pinnacle and you realise that even more confidence is welling up inside of you. And as you look back, you see that the resources you've uncovered, the strength, the confidence are all you need and you're doing great. And now I want you to imagine just for a brief moment that maybe there is something there that takes you by surprise, something that perhaps you hadn't expected and that may have been a challenge for you in the past. And I want you to notice that with your confidence and your certainty and your newfound courage, you're able to look at this with a whole new perspective and just push through it to the other side. That's right. And feeling even more confident in your ability to be and do and have whatever it is you want. Yes, that's right. Very good. And now I want you to notice all of those resources gathering up in front of you. And I want you to hold them, gather them together, the strength and the confidence and the certainty of yourself and your path. And I want you to bring them back with you right now, all the way back to now. That's right. Very good. And when you're ready, guys, you can uh, open your eyes and come back to the class. What a classic comment, Bob. By looking at the screen and listening to you, I had to think about building up my Australian super even more. <laughs> okay, great. Adrian said it was a lovely experience. What did you notice, guys? I'm curious. What did you notice in yourself? What did you see? What did you hear? What did you feel? Okay, some wonderful comments coming through. Just had to take myself off, off uh, mic for a moment and had a cough there. Adrian, no, John is saying energy and lightness. Etienne's saying it allowed me to be. Bob's saying there's an untapped energy in me. You're right, there is. Purdy, I love this comment. It was too quick for me. My brain couldn't keep up. Yes, it could, darling. I was talking to your unconscious. Don't worry about your conscious right now. Your unconscious got everything that it needed. Adrian's saying clever building, stacking the resources and bringing them back to now. Yeah, that's how you do a really awesome um, future pace. Changes in your internal state, Tony. Awesome. I love it. Well done. 
Enrico had smells and a thrill of happiness and joy. Tamara is smiling and felt great that the dreams are possible, I think. Yeah, you know, don't you? Layla is saying, my resources are falling from my arms. I was carrying so many of them. Oh, that's beautiful. Well done. Pam saying, became clearer about her goal, specific things that she wasn't seeing before. Uh, Kirsty. Yes, I can try and do that for you, darling. I'll, I'll see how I go. Okay. Colors bright and confident at the top. Well done. Beata, love that. I didn't want to stop. I could smell it and feel it. Well done. Your heart was racing. John feels in feels that there was a sense of inevitability. Charmaine said, being able to dissociate from it made my picture better and my motivation grew and I brought it back to now. Awesome. Well done. Okay. And what else are we seeing here? Okay, thank you. Wonderful. Well done. So guys, I am going to have to finish up in just a moment because we've got another webinar to start soon. But what I do want to do, wow, okay. <laughs> So many questions coming through now. I don't think I can answer them all. Um, Kirsty, can you write to me? I'll I'll give you an email about that question if you like. Just email me on um, on Facebook. Personal message me on Facebook. Um, okay, Adrian, possible to use for future pace during sales discussion or team? Yeah, absolutely. Adrian, use future pacing whenever you need to get people on board and to share the vision. And the only um, thing I would say is. If you break into that language in the middle of a sales meeting, they might kind of go, what the? So it, it depends on the context, of course. But yeah, future pacing is wonderful to use in sales, in team meetings, all that kind of stuff. Etienne, you don't want to start a year out and move back. What you want to do is let them have little chunks. So let them have the part that's closest to them first because what they'll do is imagine what they needed to do to get there and then let them have the, the three months out because they will have been able to build on what happened one month out. Ah, oh, it's easier for them to then see three months out. And then if you give them the three months out and then 12 months out, they'll be able to build the 12 months on what they saw at three months. Is this making sense? So always do your goals forwards, not backwards. Uh, okay. All right. Great. Okay, guys, I think I'm going to have to finish up. You have been a wonderful class as always. And I need to say good night from this class. The next class is the ICF class and you would have received an invitation to it. So just pop back into your email, grab that other invitation and uh, I will see you in the next class. Thank you very much and do enjoy your evening. And I want you to leave you with this thought. Make sure you're incorporating great future pacing into your coaching. How are you going to make sure that you do that? If you didn't receive the class invite, guys, go to the website and hit the button that says um, registration for classes, okay? And I'll see you in just a couple of minutes.